Nuisance and disturbance behaviour on NHS premises is unacceptable. It disrupts services and it prevents staff from providing the highest standard of care to their patients. This type of behaviour can potentially escalate to more serious incidents of violence and aggression. Following legislation introduced in 2009, visitors causing a nuisance or a disturbance on NHS premises without reasonable excuse and refusing to leave when asked to do so can be prosecuted. While the legislation also contains provisions for NHS staff to deal with such behaviour, it is important to note that it doesn't apply to patients or those waiting for treatment or care. Thanks to the Act, clear legislation and guidance is now in place to help NHS health bodies deal with nuisance or disturbance behaviour in the right way with the potential to prosecute offenders. In the following sections you'll learn more about what the legislation is, when and how it should be used and the actions you need to take to ensure you're ready to implement the legislation and that the new powers are working for you, your hospital and your patients. Sections 119 to 120 of the Criminal Justice and Immigration Act of 2008, or CJIA, create a new criminal offence of causing a nuisance or disturbance without reasonable excuse on NHS premises and refusing to leave when asked to do so. Where appropriate, the legislation also provides the power to remove from NHS premises the person committing this offence. Since the legislation doesn't apply to patients and those seeking treatment or care, those people can't be removed. I spoke to NHS Protect Managing Director Dermot McCausland to find out more about the work his organisation does to support the legislation. Now, Dermot, can you tell me more about the work that NHS Protect actually does? Um, yeah, I mean, quite, quite simply, what we're here to do is tackle crime across the health service. Um, it's as simple as that, really. Um, there's a whole sort of multitude of them, but really the ultimate aim is to protect staff, it's to protect patients, and it's to protect the valuable resources that exist within the NHS so that patients can get the best possible care. So what would you say are the three basic uh, objectives of NHS Protect? Um, I would say the, the, the first of those three objectives has to be to educate. It has to be to educate those who not only work in the NHS but those who use the NHS as well um, about crime and the effect that crime can have on um, providing those services. So what we want to do in NHS Protect is have a mechanism in place to ensure that we can tackle that. And secondly, what would you say is, is the second? The second one is very important. It's to prevent and deter crime. Um, it's an, an essential ingredient um, for our work that <clears throat> we not only prevent people from taking or committing any crimes against the NHS, but more importantly, we deter them as well. Um, because if we can do that, we can stop those crimes. Obviously, that's the most important things. But we can also stop them reoccurring. And that's also a very, very important part of our work. Um, and I would say the third objective that we have is to hold people to account so that if we have people who commit these crimes against the NHS, then the NHS Protect, us as an organisation, can make sure that we take the appropriate action and that may well ultimately end up in prosecuting offenders, then we won't shy away from that and we'll make sure that's a course, uh, an avenue that we go down and we follow um, to ensure people don't carry on this type of offence against the NHS. So what does this Act now allow you to do? Well, thanks to the Act, there is now clear guidance and the legislation is now in place for us to be able to uh, assist health bodies in dealing with nuisance behaviour. So, clear legislation and guidance is now in place to help NHS health bodies deal with nuisance or disturbance behaviour in the right way with the potential to prosecute offenders.